In this video, I'm gonna show you how I took an ordinary tough shed and converted it into an epic home theater. Let's get into this build. All right, so I first just started doing some simple sketches and then I moved over into Home Designer Suite and started really drawing it out more CAD-like. Then did some simple 3D renderings, which really helped us visualize the space. And then my buddy Wayne did these amazing designs. He is an amazing 3D home theater designer. And my buddy Steven Smith did a full-blown acoustic design for my speakers. So the first step was to do the concrete pour for the pad. We had to pump this all the way from the street. And the pad itself was exactly 20 feet by 14 feet, which is the footprint of the shed itself. They put these anchor bolts directly into the concrete so that the tough shed could be bolted directly to the concrete pad itself. From there, the tough shed was delivered on a trailer. Just like as you see here, all of the lumber is pre-cut by Tough Shed in their factories and it literally shows up to be installed pretty much in one day usually. For ours it took a couple of days just because we had to get a permit for it and I did permit the structure as a shed on the property. So they literally just carried the walls in and set them in place to then anchor them in with the bolts that were pre-set in the concrete itself. It's really just a two-man process and they put it up all in the course of pretty much one day and then had the permit for a final inspection and then finished it up. You know, anybody can go purchase this Tough Shed directly from Tough Shed and have it installed. So I wanted to start with a very standard shed. Now, the first thing I did is I took the roof struts here and I raised them. So I eliminated all these trusses and you can see that I have a modified brace system in here that was improved by the engineers. And then the AC was installed. So B&J Refrigeration in Tucson, Arizona was the company that did the install for me. Fujitsu was nice enough to sponsor this video. And we used this mini split ceiling unit, which was perfect because it put the AC air coming into the room directly in the center in the ceiling. So nobody was directly being hit with that cold air in this smaller space. These mini splits are really nice. I've got three of them on my property now for various reasons. And it's just a great way to have controlled AC. And Fujitsu is the only brand that I have on my property and I absolutely love the uh, finished product that they offer. So the next step here was to do the electrical wiring. So the wiring was done by my friend Jose and I proceeded to seal off any open air gaps and put this three inch conduit from where the AV equipment is going to be installed. It was a pain to get in there, by the way, uh, just because the space was so tight, but this allowed for future proofing of those cables. Now on to my least favorite step, which was the insulation. So I had a little bit of fun with it in terms of getting it from my driveway all the way to the side of the property where my shed is and hopped on my one wheel. And that made short work of transporting all of these rolls of insulation. From here, I was fortunate enough to have my nephews, Mark and John, and then uh, their dad, Rick as well, help me with the installation of the insulation. Had to have a little family meeting here just to check the progress of it. We started in the ceiling first and then moved on to the walls. We live in Tucson, Arizona, so this is a must to have really good insulation in the walls. Got the insulation done. That was not fun. Now it won't be 100 degrees in here working. Right now I got it down to 78 degrees. Probably gonna be my least favorite part of this whole build. Next, it was time to bring in all the sheetrock. These are 5 8 inch sheets of drywall. I was gonna do two layers with green glue in the middle. As you can see here, I'm running more speaker wires. I ran speaker wires to all the locations I needed before proceeding on to building the riser. So initially I put down some pressure treated wood and used this power actuated gun to put the nails directly into the concrete. installed all of these 2x12 joists 16 inches apart just to make it easy 
to install the installation that I was gonna put in here later. I used my nail gun to secure them all down and I wanted to make sure this was super solid and sturdy so I had to do a little stress test and this is the first time I got to see and see kind of where the second row would be. And at this point, exciting news, the first of the Valencia seats started showing up to our house. Now these were actually the three console set that I'm giving away on this video so make sure you stay till the end for that. More equipment showed up, the Denon receiver, the JVC projector, and those triad in-wall silver satellite speakers and Atmos speakers, LCRs all showed up. So kind of like Christmas in July for sure when those showed up. I then proceeded to fill the entire riser with insulation and I vented it so that it could act as an additional pressure absorber behind that second row of seats. I did most of the cutting in my garage and these are 5 8 inch sheets of plywood that I used for the riser and I used some liquid nails before I laid them down to make sure they're super solid and then anchored them in with some deck screws. And I did two sheets, so I did use the Robert's carpet glue in between the two sheets just for some additional vibration dampening and for additional rigidity. Uh, the carpet glue actually leaves a little bit of uh, flexibility in there as well, so it's not too rigid. Brought in more sheets of plywood and continue to lay them down, cut out the step. I did do a recess step with LED lighting in here just to open up some more space in the room there. Next on to building the front false wall, which is where the screen is gonna go and it's gonna house the LCR speakers and the GSG Audio BTS subwoofers. So I just built this out of two by fours and I did uh, kind of design it as I go, but I did hop over at one point into Google Sketch and do some proper 3D renderings to find out what type of pieces of wood, if the AVR equipment rack was gonna fit and everything really planned that out. About that time, the Seymour screen showed up from Media Designers. You gotta contact Lou over at Media Designers. They're based out of Chicago, Illinois. Really amazing to work with. This screen happens to have a very cool masking system which allows me to convert the aspect ratio of my screen very easily. And Seymour screen even sent me some popcorn which I thought was a nice little touch there. Super easy to install, I'll show you that here in a little bit. Building out this false wall that was gonna house the subwoofer and speakers and everything was probably my favorite part of this build because I really got to design it as I went. More little stress tests here for fun to make sure that everything was gonna be solid. And about this time, I actually had my nephew Mark show up from Texas who needed to do an intern with me. So put him to work and he was a huge help during this process, even organized all of my tools for me because I was just using them and came in one day and he had them all organized. Then more seats, more Valencia theater seating showed up. I have a total of eight of these amazing Tuscany theater seats in this theater and uh, put some of them in one of the spare bedrooms in the house. And the other four we had, went ahead and set up in the living room to give them a little test to make sure they were all good. This is my wife, Lauren, testing them out for the first time, testing out the lumbar support, which is really, really solid, super comfortable for her. And there you can see some of my family trying them out as well. We then moved on to building the upper portion of this front wall. These are angled on the side, specific to what Stephen Smith specced out for me so that those would be at the perfect axis to the ideal listening position. Here we are going to pick out the carpet. Uh, Lauren and I went and we picked out the carpet. We found a carpet from Mohawk that was super soft, but very durable because this is a shed. So we're gonna be coming into the shed with probably shoes on from the outdoors. We're walking from inside to outside. So super durable, but comfortable carpet. I formed out five of these columns just simply with some two by four to help give the room some depth and dimension, break up those flat walls and um, they turned out really nice, I think. The upper soffits, in order to house those Atmos speakers, I just built out of two by fours, really simple, shallow soffit. I need to create enough depth for those Atmos speakers in the ceiling because there wasn't a lot of room up there in the ceiling, and it went together pretty well. This is just my own design, so there might be a better way to build these soffits, but it worked out pretty good with the framing nailer. We also then went around and sealed up more air gaps that we were seeing, because it is a shed, and the better you can seal up these air gaps, the more efficient your heating and cooling is gonna be. The projector was gonna be over 65 pounds with mount, so I decided to put in this sheet of plywood to just give extra strength when we went to go mount that later. Now on to the sheetrock. We started with the ceiling. I've never done sheetrock before, so this was all new to me. In my theater here, there are a lot of angles, cuts, 
dimensions and so it was extremely time consuming to cut everything and get it just right as we were installing this and we were going to do two sheets with that green glue in the middle as you can see here the second soffit has not been built yet i kind of built one side first and then when i figured it out i would build the other side as i went which really helped me kind of learn how to do it on one side and then i just copied it on the other side so here we are installing the second soffit i used a laser to make sure that it was perfectly lined up from one to the other and then mark handily went along and just marked every single truss for me and even caught his own noise protection earmuffs which i thought was pretty cool then i hurt my knee so considering i hurt my knee i needed to bring in the experts so got Armando and then his crew in there to do the rest of the sheetrock for me. I'm not going to lie. I'm not complaining that I had to have somebody else come in and finish this for me considering I hurt my knee. Armando and his crew did a great job even installing that green glue, which they'd never done before, but they did a great job when I showed them how I thought it should be installed and they did it in about two days. So again, I'm really glad I had the experts come in and finish up that phase for me. They went ahead and patched all of the seams and got it all mudded up ready for paint. In the meantime, I did not stay idle. Mark and I got to work building the GSG Audio BTS, which stands for behind the screen subwoofer boxes. Now these come in what's called a flat pack. They literally just get delivered to you on a pallet and they're all CNC cut. So it's super uh, easy to put together. For the most part, uh, they give amazing directions. You do need a lot of clamps, so you need some patience, but uh, with the help of having another set of hands, which was nice to have Mark, he and I built two of these together over the course of about a week, just because we did a little bit here and there. After we finished sanding it, it was time to do the exo hide, which I got from Parts Express. This stuff was super easy to roll on. You could spray on Duratex, but this was just a quick, easy way to do it. The final step was to install the 21 inch Eminence drivers that are tour grade and they are ridiculously good, especially for the price point. So had to fire them up for the first time. <laughs> I highly recommend GSG Audio's flat packs. These sounded amazing when turned on for the first time. Ended up having to install all of the baseboard overnight because Armando was ready to do the paint the next day. So I went to work and got that baseboard installed also cut out these little notches for some led light controls and outlets then armando got to work doing the paint he did the black ceiling first and then did that web gray on the walls which this video just is not doing those colors justice the black is black and the gray is a really nice comfortable gray on the walls lauren found these sconces online which i thought were really perfect add a little bit of gold accent to it and then i put back in the trim work for the ac which i did paint black with a spray paint her steven smith acoustic design for the room i filled the whole front wall with all of the excess insulation because that's going to act as a pressure absorber for the entire room i then used some just regular mdf board to close that in and secure that for the screen now it was time to install those triad speakers this went in pretty easily just because i had all the speaker wire run and these triad speakers are super easy to install after doing the cutouts and it was a very messy process so we did try to minimize the dust with a vacuum cleaner while i went around and cut out these openings this i did overnight because the carpet was being installed the very next day i also installed some track lighting in the ceiling i'll be doing a separate video on these and the fiber optic star ceiling then i had to clean up the entire space because the carpet was ready to be installed Carpet is one thing I chose not to do myself just because it does require a lot of specialty tools to install it and I wanted somebody to do it right with a nice warranty on it. So I had a local Tucson company come out and install this Mohawk carpet for us. It went in in one day and we're super happy with the quality of the carpet and of course the dogs are the most excited for their brand new playroom. Onto the screen. It was time to really finish up this screen wall. So before doing that, I installed these one inch sheets of duckboard, which really absorb more sound. And this is gonna be behind the screen. It's acoustically transparent screen. So got those all installed, got the AV rack installed there. I do have it on rollers, so it's super easy to pull out and mess with any of the cables or do any upgrades. So I'm really glad I designed that AV rack on casters. The entire front wall was gonna be covered in panels wrapped in DMD fabric from Acoustamac. And I built all of these panels out with this pocket hole drill 
from Craig Tools, super easy tool to use. And it allowed me to really make these thinner pieces of wood super secure. So I use some glue and the Craig tool to drill the pocket holes. This is the big main panel that's gonna go behind the screen. And I just put down that DMD acoustically transparent fabric and wrapped it up, pulled it tight. Definitely glad I had a compressor and a stapler to get this job done. I used a magnet system that I came up with, which is just simply strong magnets and some metal plates on the wall. Now it's time to install the projector. This is the JVC NX7 projector, native 4K projector. It is ridiculously good. I did install a vibration dampener to help with the vibrations because those vibrations from the subwoofers really travel up to this projector and that vibration dampener really works got the fridge got to have a mini fridge with all the beverages in there inside this refrigerator i'll have listed in the description below it's nice size and then we brought in those subwoofers so here you can see mark and i pushing the subwoofers into the cavities that we created for them this is only 18 inches deep here on this screen wall and they fit perfectly based on building them custom to it. And you can see there, I'm putting one of those panels right in front of it. Now onto the Valencia theater seats. I was glad to finally get these installed. So they come in two pieces and we brought them in one by one, super easy to connect up together. And we arranged them how we wanted them arranged based on how we purchased them and got comfortable. All right, moving on to the light switch. So I went with brilliant controls and they were nice enough to send me these switches and I uh, have two more inside the house and they're all connected to Alexa and they control all the lighting and pretty much anything else I wanna program into it. Here I'm putting the Seymour screen together. Again, this was, it was a little time consuming, but it went together pretty easily. I did put some gloves on just to make sure that I wasn't getting any part of the screen dirty as I went around and did it, but I'd never done this before and uh, it, it went together really, really easily and the picture quality is amazing. Now I do have Apple TV, Dish Network, and Xbox One X, which I use as my Ultra HD media player for this theater. Acoustic panel time. So I designed these custom and built them myself. And it wasn't easy, but it was very, very rewarding to build them myself. Lauren and I came up with this cool triangular design and I decided to make two separate triangles to create a full rectangle, which would allow me to have a really perfect straight edge down the center of the two different fabrics, which are also from Acoustamac. Once I got the first one done and built, the rest were not so bad, but there were a lot of them. So this was a time consuming process. I then moved on to wrapping them in the fabric, which was no small task to wrap a triangular shape in fabric and not have any wrinkles. And I was not successful in being 100% wrinkle free, but I'm pretty proud of how they turned out. I secured the two triangular shapes together to create a full rectangle. And then I filled them with the safe and sound insulation to absorb that sound and then backed them with a thin sheet of plywood on the back. I thought I did pretty good on putting these together and hung them up and really pleased the way that they looked and turned out in the room. They're about three inches deep, so they're definitely thick in absorbing the sound. And then of course I had to do some sound calibration of the speakers. I followed Steven Smith's YouTube videos, episode seven on his YouTube channel. So when Michael approached me to design him a home theater, you know, an outdoor shed, it was a really great idea. You know, it was something that really people don't think about doing, but when it comes to, you know, the design itself, it's all about the room. And the room is actually a nice size space. Plenty of room to work with, two rows of seating in there. We want the sound to just blow people away. You know, when people sit down in this room, we want them to, when they think home theater a month later, this is the room they're gonna think about. This is the, what they're gonna remember as one of the best sounding rooms they've ever heard. Alexa, turn on the theater. 